just on 8.34 and a half here on Manx Radio TT. Good morning from a bit of windy and a bit of a grey grandstand. Hope you're well. John McGuinness, Charlie Williams and Brian Reed in the studio. And uh, Paul Owen's been in touch with me, Christy Dehaven, oh saying no. he sent in a few messages and you haven't read any of his Look, out. I've is got the one there the now. Top here right, to you read you better out read it out because Mars is not is ready. It, is it in Welsh? Is it in Welsh? Says, oh, no. Do you want, I'm not going to try and imitate either. I did that on the radio yesterday and made a right Go on, do myself. it. No. <laughs> Go on, do it. No. Nobody's Riders listening. from three different eras and I was lucky to race with them all. So Charlie at the Classic TT, Brian at the Ulster GP and John at the TT. So that's Paul Owen. Mars. There you go. I've read it out. I wanted to read that. <laughs> also, uh, we've got, uh, let's see, there was someone listening from very far away and now I can't find it, which is Czech Republic. There we go. Tony is listening in the Czech Republic. Nice to see you. Uh, looks like Brian and John have got a nice tan already. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. And you have two, Charlie, obviously. I'm the one that doesn't but I never will well, so you're that's never okay. going to get a tan I'm never you? going to get a tan yeah. uh, this is a good one here from Alistair uh, do you guys think we need some more new classes within the TT maybe Moto 2 or 3 bikes naked super stocks looks like 600s are now defunct what do you all make of that one right well Charlie that, yeah <laughs> I, uh, I, I, what I do think is that unfortunately it would be nice to see another class I guess at the TT but it's not that easy is it it's very very difficult you know motor 2 yes we to be wonderful but my god you know where the bikes going to come from mm. who's going to supply the bikes you know and it's uh, at least the uh, the super sport bikes are ex- at this moment in time are very accessible and easy to obtain and um, but it does make you wonder what's going to happen with the with the super sport class really because uh, the the um, as you just said you know they're going to stop making them so and it would be nice to see I think another class inst- instead of having two super sport races to have eight another class um, uh, yes I by all means have one but another class, but it's it's just not easy. I wouldn't know what that, what to suggest there. Mm. Mm. Brian, what yeah, do you think? It's a difficult one as well mm. because <coughs> you know the, what what do you what bikes do you ride in? It's a three hundred class. You know, it's mm. getting popular, but you know, around here, I don't know. <laughs> Would it be quick enough? Be quick enough. Yeah, yeah. Well that's, so that's the thing. I mean, they, um, they do a good pace. The KTM's make the three hundred. Kawasaki make a three hundred as well, mm. don't they? So there's a couple of manufacturers doing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, it, that's more an in introduction into racing isn't it yes. with the small things and I don't think at 16, 17, 18 year old you should be should be racing on the road straight away on a, on a, on a 300 uh, mm. I believe that <coughs> like Suzuki or some uh, well, some of the manufacturers are making 600s again so uh, they might put a bit of input into that again mm. <coughs> uh, interesting uh, na- a naked superbike class that would be Probably be great for the spectators, but it would be horrendous for the rider. Oh, absolutely. If, 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 without, if you had any body work on your bike, it would just yeah. be, you wouldn't be able to hold on at all. Mm. It would just be, yeah. be so, so tiring. Uh, Moto 3 would be good, I think. I think there's a, quite a few Moto 3 bikes around now. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, and after the speech I did yesterday, you have to, have to ask yourself, do you need super bikes? Well, that's mm. right. I mean, uh, you know, the, the answer yeah. to that is definitely not, but you do because of the prestige, you know, because they are the out and out, you know, super, super bike. And uh, it's ridiculous, isn't it? What's the difference in cost, John, between a superbike and a... 70 grand, maybe, 75 yeah. grand. And what's yeah. the difference in lap times? <laughs> How many seconds is it? 0.2 of a mile an hour or something like that. <laughs> Chrissy's got <laughs> something else. Just yeah, I have, yes. That, I don't have noticed that's from Alistair. Sorry, Hello, I don't Alistair. Alistair. Name there, Alistair. But this one, speaking of motor, this comes from Adam. He's actually at the back of the shop at the moment. Adam says, the 2000 uh, British Motor GP at Donington is famous in GP history now as Valentino Rossi's first Motor GP win. However... What's talked about less was the wild card ride that weekend by one John McGuinness. Yeah. Qualified in 18th, finished 13th in the points and beat Alex Barris, the pole sitter. John, how did the wild card ride come about? What was the weekend like and how did it feel to be in Grand Prix? Yeah, that was my fourth Grand Prix. I did the 1997 250 Grand Prix, that's good points. I did the 98 Grand Prix on the 500. I did the 99 Grand Prix on the 500, which was really cool. The bike seized up on the last lap at the front. Front wheel just been kissing the radiator the whole of the race, and it lost its water slowly through the race and seized up. Uh, but 2000 was good. It was a wet, a wet race and a bit of a, a tire war as well with Michelin and Dunlops. And uh, the Dunlop had just brought this like they call it the aeroplane rear wet out, which was a bit better in drying conditions. But when it was soaking, it was, it was quite difficult. So the Michelin guys and the V4s cleared off at the start, and I nearly got lapped straight away. And then uh, as the race went along. I, started coming back towards me again I was like ah this is quite cool and I, they're all my heroes you know like Barros and all them guys and Roberts and, and all that I was just like I was picking a few off you know passing them and uh, yeah no it was it was really cool uh, you know I, I was going quite good in British Championship I was leading you know I was running at the front in 250s Paul Bird uh, was a Honda back team and they had this 
NSR 500 V-Twin that was sort of, it was funny, we used to put it in the back of the truck and take it everywhere, you know, I raced it at Scarborough, uh, raced it at the race of the year at Mallory Park, uh, and days are gone now, you know, it was quite cool, I, in 1999 I won the British Championship, I won I won Daytona, I scored points in the 500 British Grand Prix, and, and you know, it's, uh, but it was, I got chose to do it, I found it tough, it was really, really hard, you know, they were the best riders in the world, you know, Mick and all these guys when I, I raced with them, and they were so, so fast, you know, they were doing it week in, week out, and I was just wobbling about on my 500, and uh, getting, the getting, and they're all shaking their heads at me as well, so that's pretty dis disheartening and things, and I had a bit of a fight with Alex Barros as well on track, he, uh, yeah, he, he, he went underneath me going into the, into the old airpin, and, uh, I just got in his way a little bit, but it's free practice. And he turned around and and started going on and let me in. And he made some uh, some gestures with his hands that uh, some trouser department uh, <laughs> gestures. And uh, so I rode back alongside him and smacked him straight in the jaw. So I thought, well, I'm, he's out. There's a few more Brits and Brazilians here, so I'll probably be able to do him. So I had a bit of a fight with him, but no, it was good. It was it was a great experience. You know, Valentino Rossi won his first ever 500 Grand Prix. Uh, Kenny Roberts Jr. was second, and and Jeremy McWilliams was third on the podium. And uh, I, I remember it. I'll never ever forget that. You know, it was uh, it was a, it was a great great thing to be part of. So you say they're, they're the best riders in the world, and yet Rossi comes here and is just yeah. floored by watching. You know what happens over here, isn't he? Yeah, I always get messages off uh, off Valentino. He calls me Steel Balls. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's just an enthusiast, though, isn't he, Valentino? He came and he loved it, and. Uh, he never stops riding, you know, he's 39 years old, he's got his own ranch now, hasn't he? So that's all he does, yeah. rides around and around and around and around. That's why he's so passionate and still strong on, on a bike, you know. But uh, like I said before, we you, you touched on it earlier on, you know, it still blows me away. I, I've never seen, there's a lot of people here on bucket list things, you know, Australians, South Africans. I went to Union Mills and there was a there was a couple of Aussie guys that had flip-flops on and shorts, looked like proper standard Aussies. One had... <laughs> well they both had a beer in their hand and they just got off the plane jet lagged and they said oh we've never seen a motorbike go around here before and they ended up in the church at Union Mills I was like oh, I was just rubbing my hands thinking <laughs> just listen to the comments of these guys when they come around and I shoved them out of the front and uh, I think he God rest him God rest him Dan Neen was the first man through and he, mm. <laughs> he just like I can't repeat what they said you know there was a few F's and what not in there but it's uh yeah, they, I mean, they are the best riders in the world. They're very, very good at what they do. And I'm sure if they come to the TT, if they wanted to do it, they, they would definitely... Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, going there. back to 1971 when Barry <laughs> Barry Sheen came here because he was chasing points in the 125 class of the Grand Prix. And uh, unfortunately, as we all know, he, he crashed at Quarter Bridge. And not only did he never come back to the place again, but he slagged it off continuously mm. then, which was a big disappointment. If Barry had scored points in that race, and he would have finished second in the race to Chas Mortimer, he would have uh, he'd have loved the place. And God, he would have been good round. He would have been absolutely awesome. Mm. But he just took a mind not to do it ever again. Funny about talking about the first Grand Prix. My first Grand Prix <coughs> was uh, Assen in 1974. But it was a long time ago. But it was Kenny Roberts' first Grand Prix as well, 250. And uh, I, I spent the whole race in a, in a big uh, locked-in battle with Mick Grant and a couple of other guys. And we actually finished 10th and 11th. Mick got the point. I was, I was 11th. And, uh, but Kenny finished second in that race. Um, but then I also rode in the 500 race there. But not on a, a proper 500. It was a sort of a, a large version of a mm. Teaser 350. And the race was won by, uh, by Agostini on the factory Yamaha, four-cylinder. And second was Phil Reed on the factory MV. And the third was Tepi Lansavori on the factory, mm -hmm. the other factory Yamaha, I goes teammate. And John Franco Bonera was fourth on the other factory MV. And I, I finished fifth. So I was right in the points. I just finished second here in the CT, so I got 12 points anyway. And I think at that stage, I was about line fourth in the World Championship, which was quite nice. But then, and I thought, my God, I love this, this Grand Prix, so it's fantastic. We went off down to Spa, and then the bike broke down. Then we went right. to Sweden, I had more problems there, you know, and uh, uh, just never got it together really again in the, in the 500 class, which is a pity. I scored quite a few points in the 250, but the 500... Uh, um, the bike, the bike was just not as reliable, and that's what you needed. But imagine that in those days, traveling the continent. If you were, you know, mm -hmm. you had to have a little bit of talent. But 
um, sling a couple of Yamahas in the back of the van and, and go off and, and race mm. uh, Grand Prix. No big know, race and, trucks. And be competitive yeah, as no well. No big race yeah. trucks or motorhomes or anything like that. It was oh, just no, 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 no. This no. was a transit van with a caravan. You know, but it was bunkers. great fun. Absolutely great. Fun. Just on 8.44, nearly 8.45. Going to get the Met office in a couple of moments' time. We're here at the chat show with John McGuinness, Charlie Williams and Brian Reed. We'll take a short break. Back here at the Grandstand.